place to hide this weary soul This vagabond And I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight
magic wonder of the rest in a sing filled with wonder. slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing worthy is the lamb to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing blessing and honor and glory and power be to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb forever Blessing and glory and honor and power. Jesus, we honor you today. You are worthy of our heart. You're worthy of our devotion. You're worthy of our love. Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Let us be filled with awestruck wonder at your might and your power and your glory. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, We always carry the death of Jesus in our body so that the life of Jesus may be displayed in our body. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake 
so that Jesus' life may also be displayed in our mortal flesh. So then death is at work in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith in keeping what was written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. For we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you. Indeed, everything is for your benefit, so that as grace extends through more and more people, the grace of salvation, the grace of freedom from sin, the grace of hope of eternal life, God's gift to us as grace extends through more and more people, it may cause thanksgiving to increase the glory of God. Father, we desire to be a thankful people. This morning we're thankful, Jesus, that you conquered death, hell, and the grave. We're thankful, Jesus, that you laid down your life so that we could find freedom. We thank you, Jesus, that through a surrendered life to you, we find life. Jesus, we thank you. And as a group of people, we want to declare our thanksgiving to you because we have received your grace. And in our thanksgiving, we thank you, Lord, that as we thank you and we honor you together, it will be a, a sweet aroma rising to heaven and that your glory would be made manifest on the earth. Father, we thank you. We thank you and we thank you. We thank you and we thank you. And we thank you and we thank you and we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that life triumphs over death. We thank you that you have given us hope beyond this world. We thank you that you have given us assurance of salvation in our heart. We thank you that you have sealed us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, that we're not alone, but you are with us. We thank you, Lord, that, that, that you do not change, that you'll never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you for life, and we worship you today that our thankful hearts would release your glory on this earth. So we thank you for your grace today, God. We love you, Father. We honor you in this place. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb to receive blessing and honor and glory and strength. Worthy is the Lamb. Jesus, might you be exalted today. Might you be lifted up in all that we do today. Jesus, 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 King of my heart, Jesus, 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 sitting on the throne of my life, Jesus, I'm surrendered to you today. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see you at Grace today. I want to say hello to someone before you find a seat today.
Today is step three of the growth track. Step three is all about leadership. Everyone thinks they know what leadership is, but you may be surprised about how God calls leaders. If you have not taken step three and you wanna grow in your leadership, you can be a part of this class today. And if you haven't taken step one or two, do not worry, we got you. You can still take step three. We will dismiss this class in a few short minutes. Good morning, y'all. Power clap on three, one, two, three. Nice! I'm not even going to do it a second time. Praise God, you guys are catching on. Sweet. Well, I'm John Erickson. I'm the youth pastor here. Um, one thing I want to point out, Pastor Chris isn't here. And so last year, a group of us on staff here went to do a Spartan race. Who's familiar with the Spartan race? Show of hands here. Nice. We went and did that. And to describe it, it was torture for three miles. Best way to put it. And Pastor Chris decided next year, I'm not only going to do a 5K, I'm going to do a 10K and a 21K in the same weekend. And so he ran the 21K yesterday, and I shot him a text this morning asking how it went. And he said, my calves are screaming this morning. And he still has two more races, so pray for Pastor Chris to get through that because it takes a man to do that. So I'm doing your connection card today, and you guys get a double dose of me, so good for you guys. Um, one thing I want to announce before I get in the connection card is The Chosen is in the theaters, and Grace is taking a group tomorrow at 1245 to Chosen, and we have seven tickets left. And so if you're interested and you want to join us tomorrow at 1245, go ahead and talk to Katie or shoot her a text or somebody a text or, um, yeah, and the movie actually starts at one o'clock, but everybody's just meeting there at 1245. Okay, so a couple things I want to mention about the connection card. If you're a first-time visitor, first of all, thank you. Welcome for coming. I'm glad you're here. Second of all, please just mark it down. We're not going to show up on your doorstep. We're not going to share your information. We just want to give you a letter and a token of our appreciation for joining us this morning. Um, a couple things I want to mention here is my favorite part of the connection card is prayer requests and praise. Um, I love testimonies. Uh, that for whatever reason, they just move me so much. And the power of a testimony is it means do it again. And so the best part about this for me is praying about these things and seeing it transition to praise because it becomes a testimony and it just gives me faith knowing that God will do it again. And the last thing I want to talk about is offering. And back there in this incredible uh, just worship time, um, God had given me some scripture that I wanted to read real quick. Oop, I got moved from it. Sorry, give me a second. It's in Isaiah chapter 1, and it's verse 11. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I've had enough of the burnt offerings of rams and the well-fattened fed beast. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or the lamb or lambs or of goats. When you come to me, appear before me. Who, oh, yeah. Sorry, I kind of messed up there. But <laughs> one thing I want to mention is that entire chapter is a prophecy from Isaiah about Jer Jerusalem and Judah. And really what he was mentioning there is he's getting tired of the religious acts. He's getting tired of just doing things because that's what's required of them. Or he's getting tired of them just doing things because that's what the right checklist of a Christian looks like. And so one thing I want to just mention to you is during our tithes and offering, I want to ask you, is this just a religious act or is this intentionality for you? Is this just something that we do because it's required as a Christian? Or is it because, God, you know what? I trust you enough to surrender my finances to you. So this morning as we go into tithes and offering, I just want to challenge you. Of, is this just an act? Is this just something we do because it's just what we've known to do in church our whole life? Or is it something that we genuinely want to do for the Lord? In, Matt, or in Luke 14, it talks about bearing your cross. And he even uses the language of comparison of saying, if you don't hate your brother, mother, and son, then you can't be my disciple. He's not literally saying you have to hate them to be your, his disciple. But what he is saying is he's saying, you would have to be willing to lay these things down for me. And so what are you willing to lay down for him? So I just want to pray into the tithes and offering, and we're in transition to a video. So dear my Father, I just thank you for the people in this room this morning. I thank you that they're here. I thank you that they chose to come here. Lord, I just pray that today we honor you with whatever it is you need. Whether it's our tithe, whether it's our time, whether it's our worship, whether it's our heart, whatever it is, Father, I pray that we just honor you today. 
Lord, I just thank you for who you are and what you do. And so, Lord, I pray today as we continue in worship throughout this service, I pray that you just move in a way that we've never experienced, in a way so deep and profound that it touches us and it marks our lives and it changes us from the inside out. And Lord, we praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, check out this video. Grounded, you are dismissed with Pastor Ty and step three, I believe, you are dismissed with Lewis. He's right out back there. Good morning, Grace. This is Pastor Chris, and I want to take a minute to let you know what's happening right here at Grace. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and we want to let you know a couple details about this week's schedule. First, the gathering will meet this Tuesday morning as Pastor Ron continues his series, The Other Side. And the church offices will be closed the 23rd through the 26th, and there will be no Wednesday night services for youth or adults. Wednesday night services will resume November 30th for all ages, and you adults can join me right here for a new series called Everyday Gospel, speaking the truth of Jesus into everyday life. This series will be four weeks on the Wednesdays leading up to Christmas. And Ladies Fabulous is hosting a Christmas party with holiday baking and decorating tips, music, and a message. It will be December 4th from 3 to 5 p.m. If you are 18 to 30 years old, Thrive is a place for you to connect, worship, hear a message, and get a meal. Thrive will meet tomorrow night at 6 p.m. downstairs in the youth room. More information on these and other events can be found at carneygrace.com. That's all we have for you this morning. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hold up, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, all you Christmas elves, we need some participation for our Christmas Eve decorating. So if you got some ideas or you'd like to help work with the team for decorating for Christmas Eve, let the church office know we're forming that team right now. Morning. God is good all the time. I'm getting instructions because I knew something was wrong in the announcement video. Anybody know what it is? Yes. Yes. What is it? December 11th. The fabulous women's event is is the 11th. It started out on the 4th, and it's the 11th. And so um, the women that want to come to the uh, decorating tips, it's not the 4th. It's the 11th, and so, sorry, it started out on the 4th, and then we didn't get some of our advertising changed on that. And then, um, hey, listen, uh, young adults, uh, I'd really encourage you to come to Thrive tomorrow night. Um, something new that we've started, there will be a meal, it'll be downstairs in the youth room, and uh, it'll be a great time to connect with some people, and uh, we hope to build that into more than a, a once-a-month meeting into some places that you can connect at a, a greater level. Um, uh, one more thing I want to share with you. Uh, some of you may know this. Uh, Mary Sylvester was in a pretty bad car wreck uh, this week, uh, that day that we had a few flurries and a little bit of ice on an overpass, and, um, and so, uh, she wound up hitting ice on that and re- hitting into the overpass and getting hit by a car and, and uh, just was not good. And um, if you know Mary, she works in the coffee corner. She sings up here. And um, anyway, she, she broke her ankle really bad, like all kinds of mess in her ankle. Um, thankfully, when she, when she hit the wall, she, it actually moved her from the driver's seat over, she fell over into the passenger seat, uh, which was good because the engine came right up um, where she was at, and actually that's what did damage to her, her ankle. But in that movement over there, she dislocated her hip and broke her pelvis, and, um, and then also has um, some fractured ribs, and uh, hopefully that's all. But... <laughs> Uh, she had surgery on her ankle um, the next day, which I don't know what day it was, that, Friday, Thursday night, she had surgery on her ankle, and um, she's going to have to probably have surgery on her pelvis unless God supernaturally does something there. Um, her son Joseph that was with her, some of you on the, saw this on the prayer, check, prayer chain, um, he had a, a lacerated liver, it took him to, to Children's, they were going to do some surgery on him, but they wound up not having to, praise God, that it, it healed itself, and he came, he came back home. 
And so that's really good news. But I just wanted to let you know that to be praying for Mary. And um, like she's in traction right now because of her hip. So like she can't move and her legs up in the air and all kinds of just horrible things. So pray for Mary. And um, we're just going to do it right now. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace. And we ask you that your grace would go to Mary. Lord, would you let your grace go and touch her body? And would you bring just just begin working in the cells, in the blood, in the muscles to bring strength back to those things that have been broken, those things that have been dislocated and put out of place. Father, we pray that you'd put them back into place, that you'd just give, we ask you for wisdom beyond the normal for doctors to make sure things are done right. And so, Lord, we ask for that in Jesus' name, and we just cover her with your blood and your grace, and we ask you for your healing power to be upon her. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for Joseph. We thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, you are healing and recovering. He's in recovery even right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, if you want to uh, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11, or no, Matthew chapter 3, sorry. Chapter 3, if you want to use one of those Bibles under your chair, it's on page 550. And uh, we're going to be there. We're going to jump to... uh, Malachi in just a little bit and stop, away, stop off in a couple other places. I have a ton of scripture I want to share with you today. Um, last week, I had the opportunity to go uh, back to Abundant Life in Grand Island and, um, and share there and really uh, release the, this message that I've been preaching in for several weeks called The Power of Holiness. And this might be the last week in this series, and many of you are like probably just been part of it, but I believe God is doing something. There has been an awareness of his presence, an awareness of his glory. There has been something that he is doing in and through our lives. Holiness is all about us encountering him, being in his presence, and we're in his presence, he refines us, he cleanses us, he strengthens us, and he makes us holy or makes us more like him. That our life, really, we're called to be a reflection of him. And uh, so last week I went and shared that message at um, Abundant Life. And I just want to tell you, it was a, um, just a great opportunity to see God release his holiness over a congregation. And um, so many uh, just testimonies of people that came up and shared what God was doing in them that they didn't even, couldn't even quite understand and um, the, the Lord gave us several uh, just like prophetic words and had people that were first-time visitors come up and, and share with us. And so it was just a great blessing to see that release. And at the same time, uh, Jeffrey Hardwick was in Columbus um, at Pastor Mariano's church in Columbus and um, was able to minister to them about how to hear the voice of God and able to uh, just give, give them love letters from the heart of God over them. And then in their services was able to lead them into a place of holiness. And um, there's so many testimonies of people encountering the presence of God, which really put them on their face. Because really, if, if we really saw God in his fullness, we would, we would, be, de- we would be face down fast. Uh, because that's the power that he, that's the majesty of who he is. And um, so I just want to encourage you that there's some things God's releasing on the earth. And what he's doing here, he's, he's releasing around the earth. And um, and so I want to share a little bit more about that today, and I want to share with you about the fire that purifies, the fire that purifies. So Matthew chapter 3, um, John the Baptist is preaching, and, and in this, um, he begins to share something starting in verse 11, and he says this, he says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. Now, you know, John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. They were, they were um, you know, uh, their, their moms were both pregnant with him at the same time. And, um, you know, there was a point, there was a point with John the Baptist when, when Elizabeth and Mary came by each other. What, what happened to John? He jumped in his womb, didn't he? I wonder if there's his womb, he recognized the Messiah, Jesus that was in the womb of Mary, and he jumped in his womb. I wonder if there's life in the womb. It wasn't part of my message, but I just thought I'd share that anyway. He goes on and says, he himself, Jesus, he himself, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will, he himself, 
will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You ever been baptized in fire? His winnowing shovel is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with fire that never goes out. He says, I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I'm going to baptize you. And really, this, this declaration, there's three things about just this statement right here that I want to point out. First of all, that it is the fulfillment of the promise of the prophets, like, so John declares, Jesus is coming. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This is a fulfillment of the promise that the prophets have been preaching about. And uh, we see it in a few different places. One is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27. It says this. God says, I will place my spirit, where? Within you, and it will do what? Cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. To follow the statutes of the Lord and carefully observe his ordinances, that, that is a move of holiness upon his people. That's what the presence of God does. When you come into the presence of God and the Holy Spirit is activated in your life, it moves you towards the holiness of God. It actually gives you an ability to do what you couldn't do before, which is to honor God. It causes you to do that. God says, he, here, this is a prophetic promise. He says, I will place my spirit within you and that will cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. The spirit of God is always calling you toward the heart of God. The spirit of God is always pointing you to the Father. The spirit of God is magnifying Jesus and revealing God. And when Jesus is magnified and God is revealed, you can't help but to become more holy. As Jesus, it says in 1 Peter, to be holy as I am holy. God says to be holy. You can't just be holy, but you can come near his holiness and he can make you holy. And here it says God has this promise. One day he's telling his people, I'm going to give you my spirit. It's going to be within you and it's going to cause you. There's going to be an unction, a causing to follow after me. And Joel, the prophet Joel, says this in chapter 2, verse 28. It says, after this, I will pour out my spirit on all humanity. I will pour out my spirit on all humanity. That means it's available for everyone. The Holy Spirit is available for everyone. I will pour my spirit on all humanity. Then your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your old men will have dreams, and your young men will see visions. The Holy Spirit will activate prophetic utterance, visions, and dreams. Last Sunday was Abundant, Abundant Life. I had a prophetic utterance. At the end of their worship time, I saw somebody who had something wrong in their bowels and their intestines that, that was just, I, I just saw something that was really just messed up and God wanted to heal it. And at the end of the service, this guy came up and he told me, he said, hey, I want to tell you that's me. I've had an issue in my bowels and my intestines for three years. I've been to tons of doctors and nobody can figure out what's wrong with me. That's me. God prophetically revealed to me something that would encourage him and that God wanted to heal him. Now, I don't know if he's healed yet, but he grabbed a hold of that word because he said, you didn't know this about me and this, that's me. And he said, it wasn't you that said that, but it was God. Because that's what a prophetic utterance does. I will pour out my spirit on all humanity and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams and your young men will have visions. The prophets promised over and over that the Lord God would send his spirit to his people. That God would put something within us that would cause us to follow him. So not only did God promise the spirit through the prophets, but Jesus also confirmed the coming of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, he says this, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor, other translations say another helper, to be with you just once in your lifetime. Just He'll be with you just every once in a while he'll be available. No, this counselor, this helper that, that Jesus says the Father is going to give you will be with you forever, that you will have him as your people. You can have the Holy Spirit forever, not just a moment, not just one time on this earth, but the Holy Spirit wants to move through you. It says the world, it goes on and says this, he is the spirit of truth. 
So the, the Spirit is the Holy Spirit, the helper, the counselor is what? The Spirit of truth. Not deception, but truth. He will reveal truth to you, put within you. Why? So that you can move towards God, so you can honor God, so you can honor Jesus, so you can obey the statutes, all those kind of things. He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him nor know him. Know him. But you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. In you. This is the, Jesus is confirming the prophecy of the prophets that listen, he is coming. My father is going to send you another helper. It's called the Holy Spirit. John chapter 15, verse 26, Jesus says this, when the counselor comes, when the helper comes, the one I will send to you from the Father. Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, part of God, says this, I will send you the Spirit from the Father. And who am I going to send you? I'm going to send you the Spirit of truth. The Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. The Spirit of truth will help you discern. The Spirit of truth will help you obey. The Spirit of truth will help you live towards God. He comes from the Father, and the, the Holy Spirit is going to do what? He's going to testify about who? Jesus. Jesus. He's going to testify about Jesus. And then in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, Jesus says this. While he was with them, he commanded them, just before he left this earth, he said he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father's promise, which he said, you have heard me speak about, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. The word baptize means to be dipped, to be submerged, to be placed into and under. Years ago, my friend Brian Dimmel was talking about baptism and what it meant to be submerged, and he took a young Chris Jarman, who was in middle school, he's standing back, do you remember this day, Chris? He took a young Chris Jarman, held him upside down, and dipped him into a five-gallon bucket. He didn't get all of him in there, but he got his head in there. Do you remember that day, Chris? Yeah, yeah, he remembers. To be baptized, to be submerged, to put into the Holy Spirit, that you would be Baptized. The prophets, prophets promised the Spirit to come and indwell the, the believer, that the Spirit would come and indwell the believer. And Jesus confirmed that the Spirit would come as a counselor and as truth and as a fulfillment of the promise. And in the early church, we see this in Acts chapter 2. We see the fulfillment of the promise. It says this in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, how many, how many days were they waiting in the upper room? Fifty days. Pentecost means fifty, right? That's what Pentecost means. It means fifty. So they waited fifty days. They were all together in one place. Fifty days after Jesus ascended to heaven, waiting for the promise of the fulfillment. I mean, sometimes God has made a promise to you, and how long do you walk away from that? Pro how, how quickly do you walk away from that promise? We, we live in such a society. Well, God, you didn't do it right now. I guess I'm done. I'm not going to believe anymore. It's been a week. What are you going to do? When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were staying. And they saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled, say filled, filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Tongues or languages. It came. The promise of the Spirit came. It was fulfilled so much that, I mean, this wind that blew through the city caused people to come running to the upper room. For those of you that are going to come to Jerusalem with us in, in March, you're going to see where the upper room once stood. You're going to see where people ran and came, and there was shortly after that, Peter goes out and he preaches to 3,000 people. Now, why did 3,000 people show up? Something happened. What is going on here? And the Holy Spirit shows up. 3,000 people show up there. And he comes out and preaches to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
So that was the, the, the releasing, the promise of the Spirit, the promise to, uh, to us as believers that God had been promising through the prophets. Jesus said it was coming, and here it happens in Acts chapter 2. And then in verse 10, uh, chapter 10, uh, the, Peter was out um, working with some Gentiles, and he was speaking, and while he was speaking, it says this, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who heard the message. You ever had the Holy Spirit come down on you? Yeah, absolutely I've had the Holy Spirit come down on me at different times. There's, the Holy Spirit lives within me. When I became a believer, the, the Bible says the Holy Spirit put a stamp, a guarantee on me of who I am. The Holy Spirit indwells within you when you surrender your life to Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that takes up residence there. But it also talks about how the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And I don't know about you, but I've been, I've been you know, when, you're, when you've been listening to a message or you've been in a, listening to a worship song or somewhere, all of a sudden you'll feel the pleasure of the Lord come on you. It's the Holy Spirit coming on you. That could happen in lots of places. It had the pleasure of the Lord came on me. I recognized the Holy Spirit as I was watching The Chosen Friday night at the theater. The pleasure of the Lord came on me yesterday as I was watching the Nebraska football game by myself. It had nothing to do with Nebraska football. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but God started speaking to me in the middle of that. And his pleasure came on me. The Holy Spirit came down. And here it says, it says, the Holy Spirit came down on those who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were amazed. In other words, the, 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 Israeli, the Jewish people were amazed who came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. And it wasn't just for God's people, but it was for all mankind, just as we read earlier that the Holy Spirit would be poured out for all mankind. So John declared that Jesus would come and baptize with the Holy Spirit in fire. And Jesus says the Holy Spirit is coming, and when you wait for him, he's going to come, and when he comes, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. You're not going to wonder. I wonder if the Holy Spirit came. You will know that you know that you know that the Holy Spirit came. I was a sophomore in high school, and I had begun learning about Holy Spirit. And actually, it was when I was a freshman, uh, my mom was going to a Bible study and just began to like, God, if you have a gift for me in the Holy Spirit, and, and so many of us think that we have a gift. The Bible talks in, in 1 Corinthians 12 about the gifts of the Spirit. That doesn't mean, you don't just get one of those. Those are all available to be active in your life, the gifts of the Spirit, to the believer. Sometimes we limit the Holy Spirit, like, well, he's only going to use one of those in my life. Probably not. He wants to use all of them. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, tongues. Some of us will say, I'll take the gift of faith, but that tongues thing, I don't want to take that thing. <laughs> so my mom, my mom had been going to a Bible study, and she was just hungry for the Lord, and I don't know if she had read a book or, or what she had done. She could probably clarify this for me. I was a, um, just about to be a freshman in high school. A long time ago. <laughs> and uh, I remember um, walking in her bedroom, and she was on her knees, and she had been asking the Lord, um, if this is a gift you have for me, I, I desire to be baptized. Jesus, will you baptize me with the Holy Spirit? And she was on her knees asking that, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came on her, and she began to pray in tongues. She knew nothing, knew she just began to pray in tongues. And I walked in shortly after that. I'm like, huh, as a young man, like, what's going on, Mom? And she stopped and told me about what was happening. So I'm a sophomore, we're living in, we're living, so we, we, we actually we started coming to Grace shortly after that, and um, it was called Carney Christian Outreach Church then. And I'm sat right back there where Willie's at. That was my first time ever into the church. And uh, was like, wow, this is a new experience. Just the way worship was done, and people's hands in the air. And I wasn't, you, some of you might be thinking the same thing. You might be like, what is this? And, um, but there was something in me that really I was like, but this seems right, seems good. Came to church here for a year, and then went to Valentine, and, and uh, was going to church there. And, and my mom, of course, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and receiving the Holy Spirit. She had like this great hunger like for her boys need the Holy Spirit. 
And they took me over to this lady's house and they threw me into a chair. We're gonna baptize you with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, all right, whatever. I want whatever God has for me. And, and, but you know, I wasn't ready for that. And so I went and I, I just prayed and, and they just prayed over me and I prayed some things out and, and um, I, nothing crazy happened to me sitting in that chair. I didn't start speaking in other languages. I didn't, nothing happened to me. But as I left there, and I began to, if I look back today, I would say something definitely changed in me after that. Like just an awareness of God was growing in me. Something changed. It was so much stronger. And so I became bolder in my faith, which is one thing the Holy Spirit will do. When the Holy Spirit comes, it says that he will give you boldness. Became bolder in my faith and, and was able to stand in kind of some dark days of my life. Uh, where there was a lot of ridicule for being a Christian and, and a lot of just wanting me to do a bunch of ridiculous things. And I, I just, but I had boldness to stand. And my relationship with Jesus began to grow. I began, I was listening to worship music or, or not just worship music. I listened to like music every night before I went to bed, or reading the word. And just there was a hunger for God in me that was because of the Holy Spirit in me. And then, I wasn't going to share any of this with you today, by the way. And then um, uh, when I was a junior, so a whole year goes by. I'm a junior and I'm, I'm at this church and I'm just standing there in the middle of worship, minding my own business, singing a song and all of a sudden, this language came out of me. There was not a language I knew. And I began praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. I did not know what I was saying but it just felt really good here. Like something is really good. I didn't know what it was. I could stop it. I could start it. I could stop it. Some people have had that encounter and they just stop there with their life. I had that happen once in my life. Um, for me, it's something that I began to grow in just like a language. You know, I, I, can, I can get around in Mexico. Agua? Baño? <laughs> That's all I just need. Where's the water in the bathroom? I'm all right. And uh, that's about as much as I can get around. But, you know, it, it, with what the Lord had given me was beginning to pray out something that was much more than that. And this language has begun to develop. And what it is is just praying the perfect will of God and this heart connection with the Lord. And it just strengthens me when I turn and pray in the Spirit or pray in tongues. And 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the diversity of tongues and how that is an opportunity. Now, listen, that, that was it just as I bowed to the Lord, it's what happened. I've learned to say some things in English, not to scare you. Here's, here's some things I've learned to say. Holy Spirit, come. The Holy Spirit is here. When you, it's, it's an opening of your heart. Holy Spirit, come. And I'm a pretty leaky person. If you, you, fill, you, know, if you fill a cup up to the brim, it'll stay there unless it's got some holes in it. If you got some holes in, it's going to start leaking out. And I'm kind of a leaky person. i got some holes in me. I don't know about you, but i got some holes in me. And so I've asked the Lord to fill me with Holy Spirit over and over. In Ephesians, it says that, you will, that there is a, that a continual filling of Holy Spirit when you turn and ask him, Holy Spirit, will you fill me again today? Will you fill me again this morning? Back in Matthew chapter 3. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. We're going to get to the fire piece. Everybody's getting ready to run for the doors. It says, His winnowing shovel is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, and the chaff will burn with fire that never goes out. Let's see if I can do this without breaking this guitar. This, is, this isn't a... This is a barley fork from what I know, but a winnowing fork is something maybe similar to this and, um, uh, or maybe has more tines in it. And something that they would take when they, when the, they would gather in all of the, the harvest, the wheat and all the stuff, and they would take it and they would throw it up in the air. And when they throw it up in the air, the chaff would blow away. And so then the grain would fall to the ground and they would have the grain. So it's how they would separate the grain. They would throw it, throw it up in the air and it would separate away. And so that was, that was taking care of the chaff or all of the excess weeds and all the excess like uh, husks and all those things that were part of the, of, the, of the wheat. 
And then you can gather the wheat into the barn. But it says, the chaff he will burn with a fire that never goes out. And this fire, he's talking about, you'll be baptized with fire, and the fire will burn away the chaff. I don't know, do you have any chaff in your life? In other words, do you have some stuff that maybe you need to get rid of that, that you just, it's just like there. It's like, man, I want to get rid of this. It's the Holy Spirit that will come in fire to burn that away. In your Bibles, if you turn just like three pages to your left, Three pages to your left. I don't know what page. Oh, it's on page 545. Malachi chapter 3. So here we are. We're at the end of the Old Testament, Malachi 3, a few hundred years, about 400 years before the book of Matthew, where, where Jesus, uh, where John the Baptist talks about Jesus coming and baptizing you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And, um, and, and Malachi talks about this in chapter 3. And this is, most of you are thinking, oh, he's going to talk about tithing. No, because that is in chapter 3. But I'm going to start in verse uh, 1. This is a, like a prophetic word to Malachi. It says, see, I am going to send my messenger. Who's the messenger? Jesus. Jesus is the messenger. And he will clear the way before me. And he's going to clear the way. Jesus is going to go. He's going to clear the way. What does that mean? He atoned for all the sin of mankind so that my relationship with God, now I can commune with God because sin has been atoned for. He will clear the way before me. Then the Lord you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger, Jesus, of the covenant you delight in. See, he is coming, says the Lord of armies. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who will be able to stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a launderer's bleach. He will be like a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. Then they will present offerings to the Lord of righteous, in righteousness. Malachi said that Jesus would come and Jesus said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and it will be like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. A fire comes to burn away all the junk and soap comes to cleanse you or to purify you. To refine means to burn off the dross. To burn off the stuff. So if you have a, if you have a, a, a pot sometimes and you're, you begin to boil something, the fat will come to the top, right? And sometimes you'll like scoop the fat off because you don't want that in your meal. And you'll scoop it off. The, in other words, the impurities will come to the top and you can pull them right off. And that's what it's saying here is that this refining fire will come and burn off the dross that God will refine or purify his people and so if you are his son or his daughter, his goal and his heart is to purify you and refine you. He must remove what doesn't belong so we can receive his covenantal blessing. And this is what holiness is all about. It is about refining us so we can be who he has called us to be. Now I want to read you something out of Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to get back to this refining fire in just a minute. But Hebrews chapter 12, which um, we've read several things out of in this last uh, month, couple months, now, I want to go to verse 3, and, and the, the title in my Bible, and, and I didn't write down what, what page it's for you if you want to turn there, but it's, um, it says fatherly discipline. Discipline. And this is what holiness actually does, is it disciplines you. Now, I want, to, I want you to think about this. Uh, two weeks ago, I shared a story about being uh, an official and being on the, the football field and, and uh, how I was relating to the coach, and God, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me when I was on the field about how, how there was something I needed to, that needed to be changed and how I was working with the coaches. And on the field, right there, the Holy Spirit came upon me. I felt the pleasure of the Lord come on me. And the Holy Spirit began to say, Mitch, I love you, and I want to help you with this. And then his grace came, his holiness came to me to help me in how I related to coaches for the rest of the year because I said, God, I, I, I want to receive your discipline. Your discipline. Most, most, we don't like talking about this. We all know that discipline is good for our children, but somewhere we think we're beyond discipline, right? Right? <laughs> So here we go, Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse three. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself so that you won't grow weary and give up. In other words, consider Jesus, what he went through, so you don't go, grow weary and give up. In struggling against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood. <laughs> you, you didn't have to shed your blood to resist sin, did you? You had to receive the one who shed his blood. You received Jesus to enter into eternal life his shedding of his blood cleansed you, and so you don't have to shed your blood because Jesus did for you. So thinking about that, the, the author of Hebrews here is just helping us remember what Jesus did. 
And then it says, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or lose heart when you are reproved by him. For the Lord's discipline is the one he loves and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? I mean, don't you see, how many of you ever had, uh, like I have, those leaky things in your life and you've cast judgment against somebody and said, man, they should discipline their son. <laughs> you ever seen that unruly kid and you're like, they should discipline him. You had some judgment towards them? Yeah, leaky stuff. Verse eight, but if you are without discipline, which all receive. In other words, nobody's immune from it. As believers, we all get to receive it. If you are without discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. If you can't let the Lord discipline you, you're probably not a son or daughter. Because there should be some conviction in your heart that says, I want more of what you are. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but he does it for our benefit so that we can, what's it say? Share his holiness. The power of holiness, encounter, it's in the presence of God, he begins to put his holiness on us. It's out of his grace. It's not out of condemnation, it's out of love. When he spoke to me on the football field about how I was treating other people, it was out of love. And it, it wasn't hurtful. I didn't like myself, like, oh, you're right, God. I should be doing this differently. But yet there was just, there was grace attached to it. The Father's discipline has grace attached to it. It has love. Why? So we can share in his holiness. Verse 11, no discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Why? Because Stand on the football field, I had to embrace humility, let go of my pride of being right, and say, I'd rather have it your way. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your tired hands and weakened knees, and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed instead. The Holy Spirit, who has come on the earth, is the one that brings conviction to our souls, the one who disciplines us, the one who comes with his fire to burn away the dross and the chaff. Because God's goal is that we would look like him. And in order for us to look like him, there's some things that gotta be burned out. So you can either, uh, there's a lot of people that will resist Holy Spirit because it's, you know, I've said this before, it'd be a lot easier if God just gave him a name some of us just hearing the word Holy Spirit just like kind of freaks you out. If God just would have named him Frank, you'd all be better. Hey, when Frank comes and talks to you, receive his counsel and let him help you. All right, where's Frank? Let him help, help me out, Frank, where you at? But no, God said, I'm gonna send you Holy Spirit, which is me, God himself, coming to the earth for all mankind. I'm going to release my spirit to all mankind so that you can be more like me as I work through you and refine you. It only happens through the fire of the Holy Spirit as you're in the presence of the Lord. The fire of the Holy Spirit can happen sometimes just when you pick up the Bible and you begin to read it and all of a sudden the pleasure of God comes on you and you read a verse and it's like, wow, I need to embrace that. And just you grab a hold of it. It can come on you when you're in worship. It can come on you when you're in prayer. It can come on you when you're minding your own business on a football field. It can come on you when you're teaching in your classroom. It can come on you when you're on the line at work going through whatever. It can come on you when you're at the gas station. It can come on you when you're walking through a store doing some shopping because the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's not just in a church. He's everywhere. And the Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have Holy Spirit with you all the time. You have the refining power of God, the holiness of God working in and through you everywhere you go. You have Holy Spirit with you. And when you invite him to come, he will refine you to do what? Make you better? How, how, many, how many want to be better? I want to be better, so I want to welcome the work of the Holy Spirit in my life, not resist the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. 
He wants to restore things in your life. How many of you want God to restore some things in your life? Absolutely. So Holy Spirit, I want to welcome you to come to refine me, to restore things, and Holy Spirit will come to give you strength for each and every day. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 4, it says this, Remove impurities from silver, and material will be produced for a silversmith. Remove the impurities from silver. There was a woman who read this verse and was like, okay, I I wanna find more out about this. So she called up a silversmith and she made an appointment to watch him at work. She didn't mention anything about the reason for her interest beyond her curiosity about the process of refining silver. As she watched the silversmith, he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that in refining silver, One needs to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames were hottest as to burn away all the impurities. Hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flame is the hottest to burn away the impurities. The woman thought about God holding us in such a hot spot. Then she thought again about the verse that he sits as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And she asked the silversmith if it was true that he had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. Do I have to stay here the whole time that it's being refined? Come on up, Abby. And the man answered, yes, and explained that he, had, he, had, he not only had to sit there holding the silver, but he had to keep his eyes on the silver the entire time it was in the fire. If the silver was left even a moment too long in the flames, it would be damaged. The woman was silent for a moment. Then she asked the silversmith, how do you know when the silver is fully refined? So the silver that had to be kept in the hottest part of the flame, and the silversmith had to keep his eyes right there on it so it wouldn't be consumed, but it would be cleansed so that just pure silver would remain. How do you know when the silver is fully refined? And he smiled at her and he answered, oh, That's easy. It's when I see my image in it. When I see my image in it, the silversmith knows that it's been refined. It's the Holy Spirit that refines. I've had more encounters that I could share with the Holy Spirit one of the things that I do on a regular basis is I welcome Holy Spirit into my life I ask him to come and fill me I ask him to baptize me afresh I ask him for his strength see Jesus said it's better that I go away so that I can give you a helper there is so much more to the kingdom than just saying yes to Jesus and receiving him and being saved, which will give you eternal life. But Jesus says, I want to give you help and hope for today, and it comes in the power of the Holy Spirit. I was trying to decide which stories I want to share with you because some are just a little interesting. I'm going to share two stories with the fire of God that came down like a lightning bolt. Like a lightning bolt. There's other times it hasn't come like that. Several years ago, me and my wife, we were watching these uh, revival services online that were going on in Lakeland, Florida. And we were watching them, and we just, every night, we couldn't help but, like, tune in. It was like this tractor pull that was just like, and it didn't matter what else was going on. We just, we were just intrigued, this healing and this revival that was taking place at this, at this service. And it was, it was, they had announced that that weekend, they were going to move them from this big tent to this minor league baseball stadium for three days. We're, we're going to move them to the minor league baseball stadium for three days. And we looked at each other, and we knew we were supposed to go. We're like, we're supposed to go. This was, this was like 9 o'clock at night on a Thursday. And the services started on Friday. So, sure enough, we were able to get airfare out of Omaha the next morning. Which, if you do that, you know what you're going to get frisked all the way through. And... And so we, we got air for it the next morning. And 
we called somebody who said, hey, I'll come watch your boys for the weekend. And we were on the road. We were on the road ready to fly out at 6 o'clock in the morning. And so we're on our way, and I call my friend Mitch Stroda. And I said, it sounded like he was somewhere. I said, where are you at? He said, I'm in the airport in Washington, D.C. I said, don't tell me you're going to Lakeland. He goes, yeah, our whole family's going. I said, really? He said, where are you at? And I said, I'm in Omaha in the airport, <laughs> headed to Lakeland. <laughs> so we wind up there the same weekend, which is just, we hadn't even talked to each other at all. We even know each other watching these services. So we get there one night, and uh, the, the, I don't know if it was the second or third night that we were there, and um, the glory of God just filled the place. And it was like the fire of God coming down. And Mitch was there, his girls were young. He was sitting out in the, the outfield behind the fence on this like grassy knoll. And he would tell you, the fire of God came down like a, just like a big ball on him. And, and it just began to consume all this stuff in him right there in the middle of the outfield that launched him into ministry, specifically a healing ministry that he walks in today in that moment. While we were standing in the, in the stands, there was like, it was like a lightning bolt just so I could come down as they began to pray over the whole place. And this just like fire began to consume us. And I knew God was putting something in me that I could not explain. And, and it just began to burn things out of me. And for my wife, she got healed in that moment her scar from her C-section disappeared right there. I mean, what a trivial thing. Think of all the healing that could take place on earth, but a, a scar from a C-section, completely gone. Right there, right then. Got back to the hotel and she said, listen, it's gone. The scar tissue and everything was gone. The fire of God comes. You, you can't, I cannot explain to you what happens when the fire of God comes. But I want to tell you, you need the fire of God in your life. You need the Holy Jesus. Said, I want to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. A couple weeks ago, August 8th, unsuspectingly, was it the 8th? Somewhere around there. I shared some of this story. Martin Smith came and gave me this flag and the fire of God. I waved this flag. It wasn't this flag. It was the flag that he had. And and in this worship set, he handed me this flag off to the side of the stage, which that's a long story I'm not going to share. And I took this flag. I didn't know what I was going to do with it when the worship time was over. When I hit the ground like this, there was this lightning bolt that came down from heaven. And I began to shake violently. I mean, I, it was like a, all I can think of is like that, that old, uh, those weight loss things they would attach to you and make you shake. That's what it felt like. I've never used one of those, but that's, I'm assuming that's what it felt like. I was shaking violently and burning, and this fire came from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and I was just hot instantly and sweating, just like boom. And I'm like, what is going on? I don't even know what's happening other than I know it's you, God. I know it's you. I know it's you. He burned something out of me that day and put something in me that I cannot, he just, he put a deposit in me. He burned junk out of me that I didn't even know I had in me. It's stuff I didn't even know I needed burned out. And there's things in my life that have just been easier. Thought life, like, like whether it's lust or condemnation or judgment or accusation and just mistreating, just, it's just been easier to not go down that road of any of those things. There's just been grace on my life. And that's only because of his presence, not because of anything I did, but because of him. Why don't you stand with me? Psalm chapter 17 in the Passion Translation says this. You know, I don't have it on the screen. Protect me from harm. David's saying this, protect me from harm. Keep an eye on me as you would a child who is reflected in the twinkling of your eye. God is the great refiner. 
He uses the Holy Spirit on this earth to refine us. And he holds us in the fire, purifying us, keeping his eyes on us until we look like him. So my question is, how long will we be in the fire? Until we look like him, which won't fully happen until we go into eternity. He always wants to keep us in the fire. He'll keep you in the fire. Come on, turn your heart heavenward. Just close your eyes for a minute. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your word, Lord. Father, I thank you that you have not left us alone, but you sent us a great Savior in your Son, Jesus. That Jesus, you came to atone for all of the sin of mankind. And Jesus, when I received you, my life was transformed forever. And I'm so thankful for that, Jesus. But I'm also thankful that you did not leave me alone, but you said you had a helper for me. Actually, the Holy Spirit came into my life the day that I was born again. You put in a positive Holy Spirit. And then, Jesus, there was a day that I was baptized in Holy Spirit where everything began to change. And I had power to be bold. I had power to be your witness that I didn't have before. And there's been a greater strength as I've welcomed Holy Spirit into my life. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know if you've ever asked Jesus to baptize you with Holy Spirit. But if you're, like, hungry for him right now, and, and, and you just want, you want more of Holy Spirit. I ask you, I just want to encourage you right now just to ask him. Say, Jesus, because John the Baptist said, Jesus, he himself will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. I'm not going to tell you, I don't know what he's going to do to you, through you, for you. But when you experience him, it will be all him. It might just be his peace and his grace that comes on you, but he might move in you in a whole different way. And so right now, where you're at, why don't you just ask him? If that's you, if you're hungry for him, if you're hungry, just say, Jesus, will you baptize me with Holy Spirit right now? Jesus, will you baptize me with Holy Spirit? Jesus, baptize me with Holy Spirit today. Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've been baptized before and you just want to ask him to fill you today. Or you want to ask him to, ask him to baptize you afresh again today. Jesus, I need a fresh baptism of Holy Spirit. I need strength and power to live for you. I, need to, I want to welcome your refining fire into my life. Jesus, Will you baptize me with Holy Spirit? And then maybe you want to go even bolder and say, Jesus, will you baptize me with fire? Jesus, will you baptize me in fire right now? Jesus, will you baptize me in fire that cleanses out the dross, that burns up the chaff? Jesus, will you baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with fire? I ask you, Jesus, to baptize me in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Come on, as Abby sings this song, I want you just to contend right now for yourself. Just ask him. Nobody has, you can just ask him right now yourself. Just you, right here, you and God, right now. Just ask him to come. He has strength for you. He has power for you. Come on, ask him, come on, get fervent. Ask him, ask him to come. Ask him to come. Come baptize us. Come baptize us, Come on, take a minute. Come on, seek him. Seek him. Ask him. Feeling. There's some of you are feeling fire. Some of you are just feeling transformation. Some of you are feeling love. God, he's coming right now. Some of you, you might, he might, you might just all of a sudden begin to pray in the spirit. All of a sudden, a prayer language might come right out of you. Come on, receive him. Bible in the book of Hebrews, it talks about the one of the elementary 
foundations of faith, which is the laying on of hands. The laying on of hands is an impartation from one to another. You letting the letting the the, the will and the heart of God move in the life of another. And I just want to release an impartation today. Listen, if you are hungry for God and you want to receive, I want to impart the fire of God to you. And if you, you want to receive the fire of God this morning and you want to say, I want to be, I want to be baptized afresh of the fire. I'm hungry for God. I want more of him. I want you just to come down front right now. And I, I just want to pray for you. We're going to dismiss in just a minute. But if that's you, I want you to move boldly. Move quickly. Come down front quickly. If that's you, if you want to be baptized in fire, just come shoulder to shoulder all the way across there. And just like God, if you're just, just come on, just cry out for God right now, right where you're at, and ask him to come. 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 We're going to dismiss in just a second. If you, want, if you need to go today, you're more than welcome to go. You can drop your connection cards, your offering on the way out. But we want to come and just pray for a fresh impartation. So my wife's going to come with me, and we're just going to lay hands. We're going to lay hands on you. Father God, we thank you right now for a fresh baptism of fire. We thank you for the fire of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Fire, fire, fire of Holy Spirit. Come, 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 come. Come. Fire. Burn it up. Burn it up. All this stuff. Burn it up. Burn it up. Oh